Well, hello, Valerie. Thank you for joining us today on ViewBug, and really happy to have you with us today. Thank you, Lori, and glad to be here. You're one of my favorite nature photographers. Your landscapes are absolutely incredible, and I've been following you for quite a while on Facebook. I think that's where I originally found you, and now you're all over the place. <laughs> but uh, I have to say, uh, Valerie, you, you are a very adventurous woman. You are out there. <laughs> getting picked up by helicopters and all kinds of things. Um, but if you have never heard of Valerie, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, you need to check out her her blog here. It's valmillet.blogspot.com. And what she's put together are some of her images. And she's going to be talking about what she's looking for in a winning image for her contest for ViewBug, which is Secret Canyons, which uh, you are such a pro at doing. And I'm sure you've been doing it for quite a while in the Arizona areas. Is that your favorite location? Yeah, you know, I mean, I really started out as a hiker, and um, and then I started wanting to create stories for the blog, and and my images just weren't matching what I was seeing out there, and so then I started focusing on the images, and you know how photography is, it just mm -hmm. grabs a hold of you, and yes. and that became the end of that, so, um, and, I, and I particularly do like canyons, I mean, I think there's just has a huge range of diversity and they're so beautiful and and I'm living right in the middle of you know some of the best country to, to photograph so it's, it's a favorite of mine for sure that's great and when did you get started in this how many years ago um, has it been since you were a little girl has it kind of evolved uh, after a while you know I mean, I've been hiking since I was a teenager so yeah. the hiking has always been there I didn't start carrying a camera with me I you know until maybe like the last four years mm -hmm. And I bought my um, first DSLR in 2012, so it's been, you know, kind of a quick progression and yeah. and really, you know, effortlessly really with the hiking, you know, I mean, you just yeah. have to now carry gear. Right. But, a little extra weight, but... <laughs> that's well, <great>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Okay, so Valerie, you're going to be showing us five tips for great canyon photography. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some of your great images and some tips that you can share with us. And it looks like this very first one, we're going to be talking about light. So can you tell us more about this particular image? Uh, that's the the Grand Canyon, the, the, the grandest canyon there is, I think. And um, that's an interesting day when I took that because it had rained for probably about 10 hours straight. Uh, during the monsoons, and when I got up really early in the morning, the sunrise looked like that with a, a little inversion layer, and um, and I think that the sunrise and and the light hitting the the low clouds just really made um, the image for me, and gave kind of a different look on a on a on a very photographed area, and um, and that's why it's. It's my number one thing for what I'm looking for in a in a standout image is great um, lighting. Wonderful, that's great. And Valerie, do you um, prefer sunrises or sunsets, or does it matter? Um, I you know, Laurie, I think I don't think it matters time wise. Um, I think I I tend to be out more during sunrises. Um, I hit them more when I'm traveling. I, maybe at the end of the day, I'm just dead, but Mm -hmm. um, I think the light is, you know, if you have a lot of good things going on, the light either way is 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 awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I think I tend to shoot more sunrises, though. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, we're going to take a look here. Here's another canyon view here, uh, looking into a canyon and through mm -hmm. it. Where was this located? This is... Um, this is, I believe, is just off of Long Canyon in southern Utah. Um, and a, a photographer that I ran into in a restaurant down there gave me this tip for this canyon, and and I, I, you know, I would have easily just driven right past it or hiked past it, and um, it was this beautiful little canyon. And what I loved about it was just the little streaming light that was coming in and highlights all the textures, and it's you know this sort of real natural light that's coming in, and um, to me, just sort of really is the essence of of a canyon, you know, this texture and warmth and um, and the lighting when it when it comes in and it's organic is just beautiful. Yeah, and I love these colors. You've got 
Kind of complementary colors here, some blues, yeah. And oranges. Yeah, really you nice. got your warm and cools, and mm -hmm. and uh, it all mixes together and makes it kind of fun. Yeah, very nice. Okay, and now we're going to take a look at this image here. And I've seen this one before, this beautiful, almost uh, identical reflection, like a mirror reflection here. Yeah, this is the this is the little canyon where I, I went exploring and uh, on my last backpacking trip. And um, the, the beauty about this place was that these canyon walls are so tall that when the light comes in, it never, in the morning, it just doesn't come in directly. It sort of meanders around and bounces off the canyon walls and these waters are really still and they just you know make some of the most almost an abstract feel to them but um, this this scene here you know as soon as the sun gets higher or harsh it's just not the same you know you just have to catch it with the right light and and uh, and I think you know people that are really patient and and know what what it can look like and can do will will wait for it. Right, that's lovely. Okay, let's take a next a look here. Um, now this one, let's see here. Are we talking about composition with this one, or is this still light? That's light. Okay, so we'll look at light here. So you know, same thing. It's it's um, early morning, sunrise coming over uh, the Grand Canyon, and it just um, we were talking about that earlier when it hits the very rim of the plateau there, right at sunrise. To me, that's just a fun shot to take. You know, the, it's, it's not harsh yet. It's just peeking over, and it just hits these cliff walls at the very top. And then, of course, you get that beautiful twilight color. And, um, you know, I can guarantee you that when you go back and look at that scene right there at about 10 o'clock in the morning, it's just it, it's not the same. So, you know, catching the light is, is so crucial in, in landscape photography. Yeah, that, that's a great tip. Okay, so let's talk about composition. So, yeah. composition, I think, you know, is, is second on my list. Light first, composition second. I mean, I, I think there's times when I've looked at images where the, the images themselves have been just exquisite with the lighting and, and then it was sort of left there, you know, the the composition wasn't wasn't thought out and um, that's why it's pretty high on my list I think you know it's a hard concept for people to get um, when you try to talk about composition but it I think when you see it and you feel it you, you know it's there and um, I think one of the things that you learn or one of the things that I learned at least as a new photographer was how to keep your composition cleaned up in a way you know you have a nice lead in, lead out, and um, and you keep it, you know, you don't straggly things all over the place. And and I think that's the difference between a maybe an, a newer photographer and somebody that's starting to polish up their work a bit. Right. I know uh, you and I are both big fans of Art Wolf. And, yeah. Uh, one of the things that really stuck with me on one of his composition classes was those those corners he's always looking for corners you know yeah. leading lines you know out of the corner here and, and over here yeah so, yeah and, and you know it's okay. art, art is a perfect example of somebody who has such perfect clean compositions you know I mean he's he's so balanced and everything is in its place and it's you know he's he sets a high bar but you know yes he does that's a good thing it's <laughs> a good thing good, yes <laughs> <Indeed. Yeah. laughs> So, you know, light, light is what I'm looking for, good compositions, good leading lines, you know, nice. Um, I, I, I think one of the things that I can tell when I look at a photograph that really appeals to me is that I, I get the sense that the person took a lot of time and effort into creating, um, you know, what we, what we all sort of universally feel is good composition. You know, it, it doesn't happen, I don't think, by accident a lot, but... Um, it it's one of those things where you know you, when you uh, see it, you know it. You know. Right. Yeah, and Valerie, you're probably composing in camera, right? You're looking for everything, all the edges when you're looking through that. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really trying. I mean, I it's the very first time that I see a scene, and sometimes in my head, you know, what I think that I. I'm looking for, you know, I, I can't find in the camera, but sometimes things will sort of present themselves in the camera that that I wasn't thinking of. But 
I think it's, you know, when you see things are balanced, and I, I do now watch my edges, and I watch things that are encroaching into the frame, and um, and it's something that, you know, I think, you know, you do think, of, you have to think about every once in a while. You it, 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 Some of it comes naturally, but I think some of it is, you know, like art teaches, there are little tricks and, and things you can do to make it, you know, better. Right. Okay. Let's see here. So we're going to talk about here, you have a little note here, using natural elements to create lead in lines. And I think this is a great example. Let me see if I can bump this up just a bit. Okay, there we go. I mean, it's one of those things that I never really thought of before, um, photographing landscapes or even just as a newer photographer was to actually, you know, as you're composing your image to see those lines and, and where they're going and how that plays into the image. You know, I think when we start off, we take pictures of everything, you know, the whole big picture and, um, and, and you sort of hone things down a little bit and, and are a little bit more deliberate, um, you know, it starts to show a little bit. Okay. Atmospherics. Okay. When shooting iconic yeah. locations, use the unusual weather conditions to make a one of a kind image. Okay. Here we go. And this is I mean, lovely. That's, yeah. And, you know, I mean, th these are the things that catch my attention when I'm looking at, at landscape photos. And, you know, we, we see the same shots over and over again at different places, but every once in a while, somebody catches something you know, either in the fog or these inversion layers or in the rain or whatever that just takes, you know, that image from being iconic to being unique. And, um, and those, that's, that's exciting, you know, to be able to shoot uh, areas like that and have them different still. I, I, you know, people say, you know, I don't want to shoot all of the national parks or the Grand Canyon because it's been done. It's, it isn't even, I don't think, nearly been done. If you're worried about that, then turn around, right? Look behind yeah. you or look down or look up. <laughs> There's always something new there. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah. I mean, it's there. I, I, I can't even imagine that anybody would think that, but it would, right. you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Canyons so, and low clouds make beautiful images. Okay. So just the different, you know, I think, um, I, I also think it's interesting to, you know, makes me, it's, I, I'm interested in it when I see what elements people will go out and shoot in, um, you know, the rain and the fog and, and that kind of stuff, because I, I think that sometimes that those images are just really, really spectacular. Um, and I think that's the difference between, you know, going to a national park on a sunny day and taking pics versus sort of stalking the, the uh, weather a bit and, mm -hmm. and looking for these moments when they're going to be different. Yeah, exactly. And um, what is this glow over here on the left-hand corner? This you know, that's, this, this, this image was taken at sunrise, and it um, had been raining kind of on and off, and they get this inversion layer that, um, that they occasionally get in the Grand Canyon. And so while I was playing with my lens um, and the sun was coming up, I just realized that it was hitting just the very top plateaus of all the canyons. And so you see the sun lighting up the canyon wall, but it's still behind the inversion layer a little bit, so it almost sort of glows. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, so nice. Okay, and here's another one. And um, yeah, oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. The iconic view of the watchtower at the Grand Canyon, and um, it was so um, it was so crazy to watch this layer come through because it came through basically like a big rolling cloud, and so I was sort of madly trying to get these images off, but I was really sort of taken by how fun it was that it was. Eventually, it rolled right over me, and I couldn't see a thing, but. Um, to get off a couple shots first was just kind of fun. So, yeah. and that's the sunrise coming up from behind it there. That's great. And here's an example of something that's been photographed quite often, but you've taken that really yeah. unique perspective. Yeah, and I think that's why it's a, an important. You know, it's it's my list for three is the. Um, it just makes it a, an image unique, you know, and um, people are willing to get out there and look for those moments. I, I, I give them props for that. Yeah, that's great. 
Okay, so let's talk about color. Make it count. Yeah, and you know, I, I purposely left the space under color blank because it's so subjective. I, I was thinking about color. I mean, for me, landscape photography just is color. It grabs you and it's what you're sort of drawn to it by. And, um, and I realize it's really subjective. I mean, you know, I... I, I always think with my own image, I tend to push the slider a little, maybe, on, on my images. And it always, uh, I find odd when somebody says to me, oh, I, I, I see with your images that you keep them muted. So, you know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just, uh, everybody's different, you know, everybody has different tastes. And, but I think there's a, there's a fine line and there's a point where, you know, it's one of those things also that you recognize it when you see it, that it's, just spot on, you know. So oh, great. I realized, I, like I said, I left it kind of open ended because I, I realized that everybody interprets color differently, and um, but I think I think you can tell when it's maybe one way or the other, yeah. too much or too little. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is a pop of color against the uh, yeah. snow. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, um, I mean I'm mean, i spoiled because I live in the Southwest, but, um, you know, we have so many really intensely colored um, landscapes that um, sometimes it's the elements around them that really make them pop. Like here in Bryce Canyon, it's the snow against that, that uh, orange that really brings it out. I mean, I think Bryce is beautiful in the winter anyways, but, um, you know, sometimes you don't need as much color as is, you know, you feel like you want. Just um, it's already there. Right. It's almost like selective color in this instance here. Um, yeah. When you have it against the snow. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Here's another canyon here with the little winding yeah. river going through it. Beautiful colors. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's the, and I think one of the things that I really like about the Grand Canyon is that um, just depending on the time of day, depending on the the weather and depending on the season, the canyon is is different all the time. And in the sunsets, this actually was taken at sunset. You get this just beautiful orange lavender glow to these these bluffs, and you know it's well worth it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like how you kind of cropped in, or you didn't get the wide angle view. You're kind of zoomed in at the certain, you know, getting the details. Uh, that's really lovely too. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I do that with a lot of my images, but I, I like to see the sort of uh, texture and, and um, layers of the canyons, that, you know, sort of close up and, um, you know, not so much. I, I don't need the whole picture, I think, um, you know, sometimes less is more. Right. Okay, here's your fifth tip is have fun, let it show in your work. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You can tell you I, have such a passion for this. It's wonderful. Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, I, I love it when somebody says to me, you know, I look at your images and you look like you're having fun. And I, I always think I am having fun. And I can tell, I feel like I see that in other people's images as well. I can tell that the really passionate photographers out there versus, you know, some others. Yep. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think that has to be, that just has to be there. And, and when it's there, you can see it. And sometimes it's even just in the playfulness of, of the compositions and what you're willing to shoot. And, um, you know, I, I, you gotta, you gotta have fun. Exactly. But, and, and part of having fun is doing you know, maybe taking the color out, trying something different, convert it to black and white, uh, like you yeah. did here, which, it, you know, yeah. really lends itself so well with the nice tones throughout your image, that little silhouette of the tree. So yeah. you know, experimenting is good. <laughs> I, I think so. I think, you know, people, I mean, you know, people are, always have these hard, stead, fast rules that this has to be black and white and this doesn't. I think, you know, just do, do whatever, uh, you know, whatever suits yeah. you, whatever feels right, you know, and. Um, I, I like to shoot, you know, the patina on the canyon walls. I think it's, you know, um, I, I think that's why one of, the, one of the things that really resonated when I, you know, started following Art Wolf was 
the what he refers to as the found art, you know, I mean, these canyons back there have these walls that are just incredible, and they're usually sitting above these still pools, so they make almost like these big, long murals of art, um, and it's just... It's pretty cool, and it's fun, you know. When you right. see it, yeah. I, when I see it, I get all excited about it. I'm like, oh my god, look at this! Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, and here we've, you know, this is very minimalistic. A little yeah. peak, peak over here through the clouds. Yeah, and that's yeah. just um, a, a cloud swallowing up. I, I literally saw this layer coming through. Um, the Grand Canyon one time, and it was moving at a pretty good clip, but I, I could see that it was starting to swallow up the canyon wall behind it, and I thought, man, if I could just get a sliver of the of the wall there, um, to me, that was really fun, and it and it was, I had to do it quickly, but um, I really liked the image afterwards. Just for me, you know, I know where it is, and it's a reminder of that day in that cloud, and, and uh, it was just, it was just fun. Yeah, that's great. And here's our last one, and this again is another mirrored reflection with the rocks. Yeah, yeah. this is in the um, this is one of the Emerald Pools in Zion Canyon, and um, it's quite a hike to get up there. I think this is the top pool. There's three of them, and um, the water there, and I, they have a little blurb that you can read about about how old the water there. It's almost prehistoric, and man, is it clear and um, I, I was just struck by the rock formations there in, in the canyon water. Um, so I, when I aimed my camera at it, I thought, God, this just looks like a piece of art, you know. Um, and it just became fun, you know, I just having to find these little scenes there. Mm -hmm. So that's my fifth one is, you know, just being able to tell that the photographer is having uh, a sense of fun with, with the images and, and sort of just what they do. Great. Oh, Valerie, this is great. I love getting a little insight into your world and what you're looking for in these secret canyons. Um, really great tips for everyone. And uh, just really want to thank you for sharing a little bit of your world with us. Well, thank you, Lori, and thank you for having me. And I wanted to say thank you for the kind words that, about my work. Um, I appreciate that very much. And as you know, I have a big fan of your work as well. Oh. So uh, I've been watching your images from your last trip, just the last few days. Mm -hmm. so it looked like fun. Yeah. Um, but thank there. you for having me, and, and I appreciate the kind words for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.